some of the PRTG sensors are just so special. All right, we are in the fifth episode of PRTG, getting started with adding sensors. And you can see right here where we've been. Now, first off, let me come back to a, a little more global perspective. Uh, this is the hosted version of PRTG, which is being run somewhere in Europe, and that's where that hosted probe is. I installed a remote probe in my house, and through the journey of these five videos, we've been going through organizing the probe device, adding the wireless access points, monitoring the individual sensors with SNMP. Uh, last couple ones, we, we added a Windows device, use WMI. A Linux device, use SSH to monitor some of the uh, sensors in there. Uh, knowing that we can also use SNMP and uh, many other methods on both of these to get more sensors. But I want to talk about now some of the special devices that are out there. And when I mean special, I'm talking about, like, for instance, at my house, I have Synology uh, NAS devices, right? Um, I have uh, virtual machines running in VMware. Uh, there are maybe some cloud services that I want to monitor. All of those would be what I consider a special sensor. Now, truth be told, there may be nothing special about it. Some of this might be PRTG's wizardry behind the scenes, kind of combining common sensors together. For, for example, um, uh, Synology, this is, this is a network attached storage, right, where you can run all kinds of stuff. Um, they support SNMP, and you could just monitor them using base SNMP, but PRTG said, you know what? There's probably some common things on the NAS that you would want to monitor, so let's create some special sensors around it. Let me show you. First and foremost, I want to take you over to my Synology box. I'm going to open the control panel and right there, terminal and SNMP. I'm going to enable SNMP on this guy um, and we'll put in the uh, the uh, community string of kitsim123. Again, you can use SNMP v3 if you want to be a little more secure, but in my house, I'm not as concerned, right? So jumping back over here to PRTG, I'm going to create a special group uh, we'll just call it, uh, well, might as well call it NAS devices. I actually have um, <laughs> four Synology devices. Yeah, for real. Four NASs. I, one, you know, is kind of like my special appliances. One is, a, anyway, I could, I could go on and on and on. But, but I have four of them. So we'll just say NAS devices. Um, we'll use the same SNMP settings because KitSim123 is what I've been using for my whole house. Add the group and add a device. Now, my main Synology device, uh, we'll just call it uh, Primary Synology, uh, is a DS1618 plus that has a little 10 gig network card and everything else in it. I'm going to do a 192.168.1.25 is its IP address. Click on OK. Now, again, you can go auto discovery and you'll probably end up with a ton of stuff added to it. But what I want to talk to you about here is the special sensors. And what I mean by that is come to the sensors and type in Synology, right? Syno. And right there you can see SNMP, okay, so we know this is kind of a standards-based protocol, but this is PRTG behind the scene. They've created some common monitors for like, okay, how about system health? You know, you want to monitor common system settings? Then go ahead and, and, and use this one. Now, while, while that's being created, I'm going to show you what it creates in just a second. Um, one of the benefits of doing it like this versus adding, you know, a processor, a memory, uh, you know, blah, 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 all the SNMP is you've got one sensor that monitors a whole bunch of factors. Again, think about licensing, think about load. One sensor monitoring a whole bunch of factors instead of a whole bunch of sensors that monitor different things, right? It's one sensor, and here's a key, key uh, word for you. One sensor with multiple channels, right? That's, that's what PRTG calls it anyway, which are individual monitored things underneath that one sensor. So let's, let's come back here. Now it's still, it's still waiting to pull data. So while we're waiting for that, let's also go in and add in uh, the Synology Sino. And let me, I'll tell you a big one that I add on everything is the physical disk. I mean, Oftentimes, a disk can go bad, and, and these things are set up with RAID arrays, and you'll never know it, right, until the second disk goes down, and bam, you lose all your data. You got to restore from backup. That's a nightmare. So why not create sensors? And yes, this will be five individual centers to, sensors to monitor the five individual drives 
from that Synology device, right? Um, that way we can tell if something is going wrong. Now, let's while, while those are waiting to, to scan, I'm, I'm just going to kind of rush them along because I'm kind of impatient. Uh, let's do check now. There we go. Get, get it scanning those. Um, so I'm going to go to the system health and just show you what this created. I'll go to the live graph, which is, is uh, kind of gathering the information right there. And you can see it's, it's one sensor that gathers the temperature, the system status, which you can see normal. If there was an error condition, it would tell you how much memory is free. The CPU load now you're like, what? It's because it's a multi-processor uh, device. The fan status says undefined lookup value. That's probably because Synology has changed what they had before to a different different setting. So you may not be able to grab everything with this one sensor, right? So that's just through updates. And I mentioned this in another video, you know, the updates happen all the time. And it's just saying, hey, I can't monitor the fan under this global one. And then you have your downtime, right? One sensor, many different values that you can, you can watch on there. Now let's look at the drives. You can see the drives themselves. It not only tells you uh, the, the uh, drive status, but also you can see the temperature of the drive. You can see, okay, is the disk status normal? It, the, by the, it, I'll show you the graph, right? Um, the, the, the graph will be able to show you over time. It's right now 39 degrees Celsius, but also here's the disk status. Here's how much downtime that's had. So if your drive goes bad, it's going to come up here and be like burnt error and immediately you'll get an alarm that you can monitor that. Let's add one more. I'm going to go into the, uh, the device, hit add sensor, and we will do a Synology logical disk, right? It's going to query the device, find out what logical drives I have. <laughs> Not very exciting. I've got one volume where I just took all of my drives and put them into one logical uh, partition. Let's do a quick scan now. Um, this one will tell me probably, it's been a while since I've added it, but probably just how much uh, data is available left on that device. Or in this case, let's see. Uh, oh, this is just the volume status, normal. So if there was an error condition on the volume, um, it would be right here. Now, now keep in mind, this is just the special Synology sensors. We can, we can get into normal SNMP sensors where we can monitor things like how much disk space is left, you know, individual processor utilization, you know, all the elements that normal SNMP can monitor. That's, so that's one example of a special sensor. Let me show you another. And, and to do that, I'm going to take you uh, off of my, my home system here. And I'm going to log into uh, what we're using over at VIA. Now, again, VIA, let me, let me just, if you haven't heard of it, I run a managed service provider, right? Uh, an MSP where we support uh, many customers. We have thousands of sensors. And of course, we're using full virtualization in that environment. Let me show you. All right. Poof, you're over in a different environment. And you can see from the top here, there's quite a bit more sensors than my house in, uh, in what we're monitoring. And what we're looking at here is a data center probe where we are looking at one of our ESXi servers. I tried to find one that had uh, no customer sensitive information uh, displayed in the names here. And you can see that first off, again, this is, this is known as a VMware probe, something specially engineered to, to query the VMware ESXi server. And you can see, you can find the data stores on there and how much free space are left on them. You can see the individual virtual machines. We've got one called SD Core KS01 VIO Manager. That's our management server. So, so hang on, look, look at this. I'm gonna click on that. And again, one sensor, look at all of these channels. So, so hang on, I'm gonna click on the live graph. And you can see that, that uh, this is just watching one virtual machine. You can see the CPU usage, how much disk reading it's doing, the CPU percent, writing, network received, network usage. So, so if you're trying to figure out, hey, you know, which one of these devices is consuming a whole, like I'm looking at this, I'm like, whoa, what's going on there? And, and, and that's where we could, you know, hide all these and, and start looking and going, okay, where, you know, what was that, that giant spike, you know, and, and figure out which one of those, uh, one of those things is causing that. Uh, but this, this is how you're able to monitor individual virtual machines. Again, this sensor type, VMware virtual machines, they have a, their own protocol called SOAP, right? And that's, that's what PRTG is using to gather all of that information. Now I want to show you one more thing and I'm going to bring you back to my own little uh, PRTG server monitoring the house to do that because I want to expand your mind. These, let me just bring it back right here. These special sensors are just downright fun. And 
let me show you what I mean. And this this is where I just want you to go download your own version of PRTG and give it a try. Like just go in, add a sensor. So this is from my remote probe running in my house, right? I could do like, you know, what what do we have in Google? Oh, I can monitor a Google Drive or do some Google analytic monitoring so I can see the success or failure of my failure. That's that's terrible. Opportunities, that's the politically correct word, right? Of my site. I can do, you know, show me show me a Dropbox, you know, what free space of a Dropbox device. You know, go go and type in Microsoft and get, you know, the world at your fingertips monitor your OneDrive, monitor a sql server monitor you know an iis application monitor exchange server over here i mean it's just like limit there's hundreds of sensors and a, a lot of them fall under this special sensor category which is just prtg engineers at work going okay what would be a cool sensor that's like almost like a cocktail where you just click a button and bam you're monitoring a lot of the features of some special device whether it be you know i'm using synology it could be a qnap device it could be you know whatever check out just just go through the sensors and just scroll around and see a lot of what's available that's the special sensor type so we've got the special sensors added. Let's talk next about how we should then organize these sensors. In a house, it might be pretty simple. When you're running an MSP or working in a business with thousands of sensors, it gets a little more complex and needs some good strategizing to make it happen. For now, keep it simple.